of you and thank you for being here. Please join us, come on in. Um, the YWCA Glendale is pleased once again to partner with the Commission on the Status of Women. We have a long and strong history that we greatly appreciate. Um, they're a true partner and supporter to our mission to empower women. And so we're so grateful that we have this opportunity again to do this. And we are so grateful to all of you for being here. Uh, it's really important that you're here and your support is a symbolic and substantive gesture to those that we serve that they are valued in our community. The strength of a community uh, is not only indicated by the integrity of its community members, local government, and commitment to best practices in respective sectors, but it must also be judged by how it treats and supports its underserved, its overlooked, and its broken populations. And this I know for sure is where Glendale shines. So thank you all for being here. I first would like to introduce our executive director of the YWCA Glendale, Michelle Roberts. Um, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Um, it really is a pleasure to have you all here this evening. As Lisa said, it really means a lot to us to see the support from the community. Um, so on behalf of the YWCA and all of the clients that we serve, you have my deepest appreciation for being here. Um, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. That's why we have the candlelight vigil in October. It's also, we celebrate it, um, or have the vigil in the third week of October because it's also the YWCA's Week Without Violence, which was really a, a worldwide initiative to have women, men, and children speak out and address violence in their homes, in their communities, and in their schools. Um, so we appreciate you being here tonight to share this with us. In a recent survey, the No More campaign, and No More is a national campaign, public awareness campaign that was actually sponsored by the Joyful Heart Foundation, if you're aware of that foundation, after Mariska Hargitay started the Joyful Heart. Um, she's actually very active outside of her television role in ending domestic and sexual violence. So here's just some, some little tidbits from the survey. 60% of Americans know someone who was the victim of domestic violence or sexual assault. But 80% of people surveyed said that domestic violence was a problem in their community, but only 15% identified that it affected someone in their friends or family circle. And 73% of parents who had children under 18 that were surveyed said they had never spoken to their children about domestic violence or sexual assault. So those are survey results, but in, uh, in reality, one in four women will be the victim of domestic violence at some point in her lifetime one in 13 men. Um, young women ages 16 to 24 are at the greatest risk, and that number is actually growing. It's the fastest growing segment of uh, population of victims that we see. On average, in the United States, every day three women are murdered as a result of a domestic violence homicide. And we all know uh, that domestic violence doesn't just affect adult victims, it affects children in the homes, whether they're experiencing violence directly or if they're witnessing violence between their parents. And children who experience domestic violence are at higher risks of substance abuse, doing poorly in school, emotional disorders, and sadly, they're also more likely to perpetrate violence as an adult. We'll be hearing a little more later about what we're doing to address some of these problems. We are doing a lot, there's a lot being done, so it's not, it's not all you know, negative and it's not all gloom and doom. Domestic violence is an epidemic in this country, but there are a lot of people, and you'll be hearing a little bit more later about people that are working to address it. Um, we're also fortunate here in Glendale. We have a really strong group of individuals and organizations that are working to address domestic violence, including the Safe Family Task Force, the Armenian Relief Society, the City of Glendale, Glendale Police Department, um, and other organizations throughout the community that, that really are coming together to end this epidemic. Um, and at this time, I would like to bring up one of our strongest allies and partners, Denise Miller, who is the uh, chair of the Commission on Status of Women. 
On behalf of the Commission on the Status of Women Glendale, we thank you for joining us this evening. We are honored to join forces with our community partner, the YWCA. It has been a long and strong relationship that we continue to have and to look forward to as we work on the behalf of women in the city of Glendale every year. This October marks the, com the Commission's eighth annual Domestic Violence Awareness Month. We are partnering with local organizations to bring you two significant events against anti-violence that will raise awareness and promote prevention in our community. Tonight's event is held in memory of domestic violence, both survivors and those who have lost their lives. Given that one in every four women experience domestic violence in their lifetime, the vigil also provides an opportunity for awareness, education, and outreach to our community. This Sunday, October 20th, the Commission is partnering with several of you who are here in this room. The Glendale YWCA, Massage Envy, the Armenian Relief Society, the Seroptimus International Glendale, and Dativ Outreach to raise awareness and educate the community about domestic violence. CSW and our volunteers from all of those various organizations that have joined forces with us, we will be present at four locations. From 9 to 2 p.m., we will be at Montrose Harvest Market in North Glendale, as well as Massage Envy on Brand Boulevard. That would be Sunday, 9 to 2. And then, from 12 to 4, we will be at two locations in the Glendale Galleria, outside of the J.C. Penney's Court and outside of the Macy's Court. Our purpose for being there is to stand united and to pass out purple ribbons and literature from all of our various organizations that provide services to women and their families in Glendale. The Commission has created a Women and Family Resource Guide and we will also be distributing that. Further, the Commission, the YWCA, and the Glendale Police Department are all wearing purple ribbons. The pin is a replica of the Police Chief's badge and includes a purple bow that symbolizes our partnership with the police and the community to raise awareness about domestic violence. Every year the commission raises money to provide the Glendale Police Department with funds for emergency housing for victims of domestic violence. We thank Police Chief Rhonda Pompa, Deputy Chief Carl Povolitis, and Tom Lorenz, as well as the entire Glendale Police Department for joining with us in a united front in wearing this badge. It is, it is a badge of honor to symbolize our united front in eliminating domestic violence. The pin which we're all wearing has been gifted to a number of the survivors of the domestic violence survivors group here at the YWCA so that we will all carry out the rest of this month in a united front against domestic violence. Thank you again on behalf of the Commission on the Status of Women, Glendale. Uh, well, I never miss this event because it means a lot to me. Number one, to recognize the Y, all the staff uh, members at the Y, and uh, the Commission on the Status of Women, and all of the volunteers that put these uh, programs together. Uh, <clears throat> but this is an important event, and I think we all know, we all understand that this issue, and it's a major issue, it has nothing to do with culture, it has nothing to do with income, with age, or anything else. This is part, unfortunately, of the human condition, and it's something that uh, in this city, and hopefully throughout the country and the rest of the world, we're going to work on and we're going to minimize it every year. And these are the type of programs and the type of uh, people that can help us do that. So on behalf of the city of uh, Glendale, uh, I appreciate everything that, that you do. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. And uh, this is my first event. And uh, I think Frank put it very well, it's, it's, it's an affliction that is part of human society, unfortunately, and all we can do is get the awareness out there, get the information out there, and just remember that it's there, and that we have to work at it 
on a daily basis. I'm, I'm just so overwhelmed by the, the, by the turnout because I, I literally see all of Glendale here. And uh, that's the only way we can address an issue like this, and that's the only way we can overcome it to the extent that we can. So thank you very much for putting it together, and thanks for inviting us. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm here today on behalf of uh, Assemblyman Gatto, who couldn't be here in person, but who is certainly here in spirit. And as I was listening to your comments, I was thinking, you know, for, for the younger members in the audience, you would probably be shocked to know that 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, you know, before that, domestic violence was a dirty little secret. People didn't talk about it. It was kept hidden. Families dealt with it the way they could. And slowly over time, uh, there were movies about it, a, a, a seminal movie, The Burning Bed, that starred uh, Farrah Fawcett. Uh, if you haven't seen that movie, it's, it's gut-wrenching, but it, it did so much to bring this to the fore. And the way the police deal with domestic violence now, so different than in the, other, in the olden times, <laughs> which is, I can't think of a better word for a long time ago. But it, it's just great to see today in this room uh, all the people join together on this issue, uh, the community, uh, and they're working together to create laws and change cultural perceptions that uh, tolerance uh, or condoning of domestic violence is not a good thing. Your vigil tonight sends a clear message to victims and their families, a message of hope, a feeling that they're not in this alone, uh, that the community is by their side, and that they can fight with others who are currently going through this violence. So I applaud the Glendale YWCA the police department, the Commission on Status of Women, Armenian Relief Fund, all the groups that are here tonight uh, in unity on this issue um, and for recognizing the real danger of domestic violence in our communities and for acknowledging the need to build awareness and create partnerships to protect the victims and to educate young men and women on how to enable, uh, how to end, not enable, the cycle of violence and abuse in their lives. So thank you very much to everyone. I want to thank uh, the Glendale YWCA Board and Executive uh, Director, as well as the Commission on Status of Women for inviting me and including me in the program. Most of us here today, I see familiar faces because I've been attending, like Councilman Frank Quintero, every year. Most of us here today are Council members, staff members, board members, volunteers, Glendale PD, and all of us know the necessity of empowering, of helping out, of reaching out, and saying no to violence. I'm happy to see that organizations collaborating together to empower, inspire, prevent, and educate community members are growing year after year. I got involved since 2003, collaborating with these organizations and individuals when City of Glendale Council decided to create the Commission on Status of Women and nominated seven women from diverse community members to come together. And domestic violence was one of our top priorities. And I'm so happy to see old commissioners, new commissioners continue, continue the work that was started years ago, and it's growing. New organizations and new individuals are inspired to continue the work. And one of those individuals, a good friend of our organization, a supporter and a donor, called me early this year and told me that he's so inspired by the work that we're doing that he's going to open an endowment fund in the name of his wife in the amount of $100,000 to raise awareness for domestic violence. We are already partnering with the Glendale Police Department. I saw Lieutenant Abrahamian here. Hi. Uh, the YWCA, Neighborhood Legal Services, 
and a lot of other organizations to come up with a working plan. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. If we have resources in the community, we don't want to establish new resources. We want to refer the victims to the resources that we have in the community. What we need is more professionals. We need more volunteers to get involved and to collaborate with each of the organizations that are here today. So collectively, we will say no to violence. The Armenian Relief Society has five social service centers throughout Los Angeles and it has a psychological center that gives free services to community members. And we are seeing inspirational stories and I want to share a story because we always hear sad stories, stories of death, but I want to share this inspirational story uh, and I usually tell this story a lot because it inspires, it's a story of love, it's a story of hope. An acquaintance of mine arrived to the Los Angeles, to, to the United States, with her five-year-old son to reunite with her better half, only to discover that her better half has already found another better half. And when she meet, demanded answers, the abuse started and the beating started. She became a shell of a person and she discontinued her relationship with other members of the, of the family, of her friends. And anything and everything that I did to help out, um, she did not accept. She was fearful. She was in denial. Until one day, and I remember it was New Year's Day, I received a phone call and she requested help. She requested help uh, asking for somebody to go with her to her apartment to get her belongings. And when I demanded to see her, she refused because she didn't want me to see her bruises. And I said, the only people or person that can go with you is the police department. And I encouraged her to go to the police. She did not accept. But eventually she did because anywhere that she turned, they said the same thing. And thank God that finally she realized that not only her life was at stake, but her son's life was at stake. The husband was arrested, and fast forward, my acquaintance, who is my good friend right now, got her BA degree in accounting, and <laughs> and is working at JPL. Single mother who turned shame, fear, into confidence, into independence, and she is an inspiration to her family, to her surrounding, and to her friends. And hopefully she will be one of our spokesperson when we start the new programs. Soon, the Armenian Relief Society, in collaboration with the YWCA, Glendale Commission on Status of Women, and Glendale Police Department, and Neighborhood Legal Services, will come up with new resources, will come up with a workable action plan, and we're going to reach out to the community members and save lives. And I advise anybody in the audience who is undergoing abuse, not only physical abuse, because abuse, domestic violence, is not only physical. To reach out and ask for help. And if you, anyone, knows anybody, please do not hesitate to give a lending hand. And please, let's turn our words into action.
Thank you very much. Well, thank you all for, uh, for being here on, on what is a, a very important event. And I think what a great uh, tribute and uh, indication of a community that truly cares. When you look around at the attendance here and the, and the willingness uh, to uh, address this, this very important issue, uh, what a great tribute. So, so thank you all for being here. You know, there's, there, there's four concepts that I think are, are, are so important when you look at the issue of domestic violence. And, and that is leadership, it's courage, it's awareness, and it's partnerships. So let me uh, for, first talk about the issue of leadership. And, and it takes great leaders in the community uh, to step forward and be willing to address issues uh, like domestic violence. And, uh, and realize it's not just a law enforcement issue, it's a community issue. And uh, we've been very fortunate not only to have great political leadership, uh, but the great community leaders uh, like the uh, YWCA, uh, the Commission on the Status of Women, the uh, Armenian Relief Society. Uh, I thank you all for, for caring and, and for being such great leaders uh, in the community willing to step forward and, and uh, uh, make this a priority. That, that's so important. You know, I want to mention the, uh, the victims in domestic violence, and I think Su Suzanne uh, mentioned it well as it's kind of that dirty little secret that doesn't get out much. You know, to break the cycle of violence, it takes tremendous courage on the part of, our, uh, of the victims. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, it, it puts the uh, victim and their families at great risk uh, uh, to bring it to public light. Um, and there's a, a lot of consequences that go with this. So uh, thank God we have uh, uh, courageous uh, uh, women out there that are willing to step up, that are willing to put an end uh, to, to the cycle of violence and, and do something about it. But they can't do it in, in, unless they have a community that's, that's there to, uh, to support them. Uh, so here's where it's so important that, uh, that awareness be always on the forefront because it's so easy. If it's out of sight and out of mind, uh, it's, it's very easy to forget about it. And we simply can't afford to do that. And that's why this event and the work that the, uh, the YWCA and Commission of Status of Women and all the great organizations that they, they, that they do throughout the course of the year to keep this on the forefront is so, so very important. Because when we have that awareness, it'll generate the support that, that the victims need to break that cycle uh, of violence. And finally, it, it, you know, I, I, I've often loved the, uh, the, the little cliche that it takes a village. And I use that often when we talk about public safety. But uh, when we look at, at the issue of domestic violence, it really takes a community. And, uh, and to see the community rally uh, around this issue and, and be willing to bring it to the forefront and, and address it is, is just tremendous. Uh, so we thank you all for, for making this a priority uh, and let you know that uh, the police department and all our staff here tonight, it's a priority with every one of them and uh, we intend to make a difference with your, with your help and support. So thank you for being here tonight. Under the direction of Tu Devera, we have um, the JV Dance Company here who will share with us their vision of um, To See the World. Uh, their performance is based on a song called uh, To Build a Home, and it highlights uh, the building of a home, the destruction of the home, and the, the hope and the strength to rebuild. And it's a beautiful piece, and we're happy to have them come uh, to share that with you.
she just walked out, but um, we want to acknowledge the dancers for coming. Um, Elizabeth is one of our case managers and her daughter was in the performance. We uh, saw them on YouTube and we just wanted them to be here so much to highlight in movement and in art what we do here at the Y um, and what the women that we work with and who we serve, what they go through. So it was a beautiful piece. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it's a great introduction for me to be able to talk about just um, making a difference in what we do here at the Y. Um, I'm the Domestic Violence and Services Manager. And it is my um, great privilege to work with a group of very strong, um, dedicated, uh, caring uh, team that is here um, heartfelt every day to provide the strength, the encouragement, the comfort, um, the healing, the opportunities to be able to live lives independent and free from violence. Not too long ago, we surveyed for a week uh, the women and asked them some specific questions to see how we were doing. Um, they can't hear me. Uh, so we asked them some specific questions. The first question we asked was, um, did you feel more hopeful about the futures after receiving services from us? And 93% of them said yes. We asked them if they felt more confident in their decision making after receiving services, and 93% of them, 95 of them, 95% of them said yes. We asked them if they understood how to better plan to keep their families and themselves safe and 95% of them had said yes. So for us, those are very empowering numbers um, and they're hopeful numbers for us. From June 2012 to July 2013, we supported 99 domestic violence victims and their children in our emergency shelter. And we had 2,310 bed nights for that time period. And so we were happy to be able to assist, but Numbers tell a lot about the work that we do. We make a difference. We are slowly but surely creating a space where those individuals that we serve can feel safe, supported, and empowered. It is our hope to continue to provide opportunities for self-discovery, independence, and opportunities and skills to live a life free from violence. I have the privilege to work here. I want to acknowledge the contributions of the Glendale community. Your support gives us the resources necessary to carry out our mission. We need you. Our clients need you. Our staff come in every day, determined to create opportunities for yet other families to live a life free from violence. Our team has heart. They walk alongside our clients every day and support them. At times, I have witnessed how fearless the team can be, and I am truly moved by their efforts. In being grateful working here, I wonder what keeps me going every day to come in and do the work that we do. And so I asked myself after being asked, why do I come here? And I came to the conclusion that I am inspired when I come to work. Their journey is not easy. It's not easy for our clients to start over, to leave behind all the things that they know, sometimes family and friends. It's not easy to face their fears and to challenge beliefs. It's not easy to change, to start to make your own decisions, to start to fight for your rights, to ask for help. It's not easy to face your abuser going before a judge in a courtroom fighting for the things that you know you need and that you deserve and you want. It's not easy to speak up when you're so used to not being allowed to. It's not easy to detox from the violence when you've been so intoxicated for a long time and sometimes that intoxication comes from your own childhood. It's not easy to wake up to reality where struggle is daily 
and hope is not always there. But our clients don't give up. They fight, they speak, they begin to heal, and they grow, and they keep moving. And the inspiring thing is that when you're able to see them in support group, they inspire others. They share their stories, they encourage others, they motivate others, and they hold each other together. They inspire me. It simply isn't easy for them, but with our support, we can help them. We need to send a message to them and to all those who haven't heard it yet that they are not alone, that we are with them. You make a difference. Your very presence here tonight makes a statement, and I applaud your commitment for being here today. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to uh, invite our poetry readers who are going to share uh, the reading for us. We have Lilith Nerinians, our Armenian um, case manager. Eva Mirakanian, student ex officio from Commissioner. Rima Sakayan, student ex officio Commissioner. Survivor. There is a melody inside of me that changes with the breeze. Hay una melodía dentro de mí que cambia con la brisa. Mi melodica y mech por poco me camuje. Sometimes fast, yet other times slow. It comes from the deepest recesses in my innermost soul. A veces es rápido, otras veces lento, sin embargo, viene de lo más profundo, de mi alma más interna. Yer pemen arak, yer pemen dandak, da gali se chorkit, bochum im chorkit. It is the rhythmic beating of a Latin dance, powerful, intense, singing louder, Finding power as each day I survive. Es el latido rítmico de un baile latino, potente, intenso, cantando más fuerte, en un búsqueda de poder, ya que cada día sobrevivido. Hay una mano latina que no para el ritmo, usa para partir el co, usa que no lo cansen o ritmo es abrumen. It is the gentle flowing tunes of a lullaby, half whispered to a sleepy child. Son los tonos suaves que fluyen de una canción de cuna de que consuela en el sueño de niños. Ein mer mankan ororani meredine, inchpes parakshan pokrik mankan. Sleep, my dear, peace is near. Each day I live, I truly survive. Duerme, mi amor, la paz está cerca, cada día que vivido. Yo realmente sobrevivido. Kanish Sirelis, Kavavutsuna Mote, Amen Aprat Or, Yesmera Pruman. Thank you, Lisa. Um, at this time, we're going to have the explorers go around and light our candles. And it's my honor to invite um, Al Garcilazo, the chaplain from Glendale Adventist Hospital, and Father Vasken Movsesian to join me in the moment of silence that we will be having. Lights, please. If we could all stand for a moment of silence, please.
as I offer this prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, we are grateful to be here tonight as we honor the victims of domestic violence. We have been touched by their stories and sympathize with their plight. Domestic violence is a real curse in our society and we should do everything in our power to end it. May our presence here tonight demonstrate our commitment to this end and may we help light the way. Tonight, we lift up the victims of domestic violence and pray that you, O oh God, will continue to be a presence in their lives. We admire their courage and ask that you will grant them strength as they strive to live healthy, normal lives. Please bless them as well as their families. We also pray in the spirit of St. Francis that you will make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow seeds of love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that we may seek not so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. Now fill us with your spirit and grant us your blessing. Amen. Let us take a moment to look at the candles, the flames that are in front of us, and remind ourselves that the light takes away the darkness. We thank God for this beautiful opportunity that we have come together this evening in a spirit of unity and in a spirit of love. As we have identified the disease and the epidemic, let us also identify within us the light that is the cure to that epidemic the cure that is our love, a love that is beyond understanding, a love that lightens up even the darkness. Lord our God, we thank you for this evening. We ask for the strength to become those instruments of love. And in all things, we give praise and glory. Amen. We would like to give thanks to our amazing volunteers, and I know that some from National Charity League are here, always been a great supporter of ours. As well as the Glendale Explorers. They are rock stars. Thank you so much. Um, in, in closing, uh, we especially would like to thank our YWCA staff for their time, talent, and devotion to those we serve. Um, working in nonprofit, you know that it's the, the heart and soul of an organization is primarily centered um, in those that provide the direct services to the client. And we are gifted to have an amazing staff. Uh, I just want to say something in the last minute in t wrapping this up. We had, our, we had a Seroptimist International uh, Regional Conference here last week. We were honored to have a Navy uh, service member uh, make uh, an address to us, and she's a survivor of childhood abuse as well as a witness to long-term domestic violence. And she had a quote that I think really resonated with me, and I think that it's so applicable to who we are and what we do and who we serve. Uh, a river cuts through rock not because of its power, but because of its persistence. And I think the sentiment is a reminder to all those we serve, and it's an inspiration that there is always hope in the darkest of moments. If you know someone who needs help in domestic violence, uh, or if they're in a situation, I would ask you please to look at the resources that we have over here on the tables with YWC Glendale, with the Commission on the Status of Women. Uh, also look for flyers over there for events that we have upcoming. We also, uh, the GlendaleYWCA.org uh, website, we have a 24-hour hotline that uh, can be accessed. And to find out more from the Commission on the Status of Women, you can um, look at their website as well uh, and research what they offer in our community. We appreciate all of your support, and we thank you so much for being here. So thank you, drive safe, and God bless.